This is Courage Rises with Susan Jeffries, episode 14. Do you ever wish you had more courage to affect change in your life? Or wish you could harness the courage you have to move forward faster towards your goals? I believe that exhibiting courage or even being told you are courageous can be transformational. Courage is not a trait that everyone's born with, but it can most certainly be learned through practice and shifting your mindset. My hope with these interviews is that you will recognize yourself in some of these stories of everyday courage, tell yourself you are also courageous, and begin to move the needle on your own courage continuum. Let's get started. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Courage Rises with Susan Jeffries. I'm really pleased to be interviewing my good friend, Julie Dilling today. Julie and I have known each other for 15, probably 15 years. We have been on and off a board of a, a, an arts nonprofit together. And I, I'm just really glad she's here. Julie, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit, tell people where you live, um, what you do, how old you are, that kind of thing? Sure. Uh, my name is Julie Dilling, and I live in uh, Alito, Texas, kind of out in the country. We have about 10 acres out here and chickens and a couple of dogs. So uh-huh. we're, we're somewhat farmers. We have a nice garden. <laughs> um, I'm 62. I've been doing mosaics since 19, uh, since about 2000, I started doing mosaics. And before that, I worked for... Um, an audio video company. And then before that, I worked for a geologist. I have a, or partially, almost have a geology degree. So I worked in a geology field until the, I guess up until about the mid nineties. And then I went to work for audio video and then I found the true love of my life, which is called mosaics. (laughs) And that's, that's how uh, Julie and I know each other through the Society of American Mosaic Artists, which we both are on the board of again, and have been on and off for 20 years. So, (laughs) (laughs) so um, uh, Julie makes beautiful art and uh, um, I'll have to include a link in the comments as to where you can go and look at some of it. So, Anyway, welcome, Julie. Um, I'm going to start with a few questions. When I say the word courage, what does that mean to you? Uh, for me, that's, that is the definition of my mother. <laughs> I, she has just always been the, the heart and soul of our whole family and just has been through and stood up to things that I think a lot of people wouldn't have been able to Mm -hmm. and still going strong at 82. So for me, that is courage right there. So it's um, facing adversity and plowing through. It's um, having the courage to keep the family together despite everything that's going on, that kind of thing. Right. That kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. And just getting up every day and going about, you know, I think for me, particularly you have to get up every morning and have some sort of plan for that day. Mm -hmm. I think that if you have your plan, your, your things that you have to do, you're better. And especially as I get older at 62 and I'm home most of the time now, I think I do much better. And I think P I think people in general do better. If you have a plan and you're getting up every day and you're going to, you're going after something. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) Um, you know, we often call that your why, like why you get out of bed in the morning, yeah. why you you push persevere, even you know why you give yourself goals to meet. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think people do a lot better if they um, have a goal they're working towards and they have a plan for achieving. Right, it. and yeah. I think that takes courage to get up and do that every day because I think we all know that. You know, there are some days we just as soon not get up and do anything. <laughs> so. And I that's think it takes courage to get up and do. And that's really important. So one of the things I like about um, doing these interviews is that uh, a lot of people are they're just exhibiting everyday courage, you know. And I don't think people give themselves enough credit for the courageous things that they do just on a daily basis because they take for I, granted that they know how to do it and they're going to do it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So um, is it important to you 
to be seen as courageous by your family and friends? Yeah, I think so. I think I like to, I want people to look at me and know that, you know, okay, she gets up and does what she's supposed to. And, and you want to feel, I think courage, if you can show that you have courage to yourself, then you also show you have some, um, oh, I don't know, maybe a uh, self-esteem I guess that's what I'm trying to look for is that you know showing courage and having courage also builds your self-esteem yeah I, I think that's really true I like to talk about the courage continuum so a continuum as you know is kind of a line I, I envision it as a curved line but it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. it's moving the needle on that all the time like it doesn't have to be big steps or, or whatever but it's transformational you tell yourself you're courageous you do a few courageous things and you start incorporating that into who you believe that you are right. and that's right. i think that's what you're saying too is that mm -hmm. it improves your self-esteem by it does yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think that's important i agree you know I just think that's something everybody has to get up and strive for every day. And again, it comes back to that's what courage is, striving to do better and, and get your plans together and, and follow through. And mm -hmm. again, and I think all that adds to your self-esteem. I think it does. And I think too, so you and I are about the same age. Um, and at our age, like I, I retired from my corporate job and uh, it's like, well, you know, I've started something new and I, I continually get questions like, why are you doing that? You're retired. What are you doing? You know? And, um, and I'm doing it for my self-esteem and because yeah. I know that there's more that I can do. Yeah. 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 And I know, I know that you take some, um, I know that you take some risks that a lot of people would consider courageous just in the things you do for recreation. I mean, you're an avid <laughs> scuba diver, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, I've scuba dived quite a bit all over the world. Mm -hmm. Have any of the situations you've been in been scary? Yeah, oh yeah, I've had a couple of scary situations. But, you know, there again, it's when... Um, you're under, when I'm underwater, it is probably the most calm I, I ever am. It feels to me, it, it was the first time that I really felt like, oh, you're just a speck in this big old world. You know, I, I don't think mm -hmm. I'd ever really, I think we all get caught up in our everyday lives and we're busy and, and you know, you don't realize what a grand place we live in. And, mm -hmm. and the whole universe and you know and so when you're underwater for me it was that sense of oh right you're just you're a little speck out here you're a fish amongst fishes you know you're nothing you're you're a legend in your own mind I, underwater. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love that <laughs> So I, I, that's one thing I really enjoy about job. And it, for me, it is a very, very peaceful place. And so I found, because I'll tell you a secret about diving. When I was, uh, we were in uh, Sulawesi scuba diving and there's the sea snakes there and they're not, they're dangerous, but their little mouths are so tiny that the oh. actual chance of somebody getting bit is, you know, not really relative or it doesn't really matter but I am terrified of snakes I mean you know we live out here in Texas and we have rattlers up at our yeah place. yeah we I do in Arizona horrified. too yeah yeah I'm horrified of snakes but you know when I'm underwater those sea snakes and the eels nothing bothers me I can get right in the middle of them and they don't affect me That's and I don't amazing. know it is amazing and it's I don't know I've, I've thought about that a lot because it's like why is it on land I am just ridiculous but underwater I'm not <laughs> so you yeah. know it just is a, it's an interesting thing it's a little phenomenon for me yeah maybe maybe you see yourself differently underwater I mean maybe you're like a different person to yourself I underwater. Think yeah you know and that's that could be true because again underwater you don't you don't feel a, 
you know, you're not conscious. I'm not conscious about what I look like. I'm mm. not, you know, it's just a whole bunch of different things like that. So yeah, I just, I'm a, I'm all about scuba diving. Very it's interesting. More, yeah. I love it. And then I like to, uh, you know, we've done, I mean, just getting to some of the destinations that we've gone to in the past has been a challenge. <laughs> so, uh, so you have to kind of be zen about it, right? <laughs> yeah, you do. You can't, you can't get worked up about your, uh, your plans falling through or <laughs> how you're going to get there or anything, really. Yeah, you that's just funny. To, you have to learn to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I want to know if you have a story that you want to, aside from your scuba diving, if you have a story that you want to tell about courage. Sure. I, I'll talk about my trip to Italy. It's been about, uh, it's in 2017. And I was asked to, um, there's a, a mosaic artist over there that puts on these symposiums and he had, he had invited me and when I first got the letter, I was sure something was wrong. I thought, oh, somebody's gotten my email and accidentally sent me this letter to <laughs> go over. It was, uh, he went, we went to uh, Sardinia. He invited oh us, invited a group of artists over to Sardinia. And we were there for, um, I think it was about 15 days. Who, who and, was it? Was it Julio uh, or? Yeah, Julio Minosi. Okay. And he, mm -hmm. does, he does these symposiums. He hadn't done any lately, obviously, mm. but in the last years, he does symposiums every year, in which he invites a group of artists and you go over and you create something that you leave behind. Oh, and, I love that. Yeah. And, and he is just such a beautiful soul and so it was just uh I, I like I said I still to this day I get out my little letter that I got an email and I printed it out so <laughs> that's old school right yeah <laughs> I, I print it out and I just look at it and it's still just oops I lost your video sorry there we go I'm <laughs> back sorry um I was just so blessed to be invited. And, and so I think that that was the start of something that really was a good thing for me because always before I never, in all the years I've done mosaics professionally and just on my own as well, I never really felt like I was, you know, uh, quite enough I guess that's the meaning that's the thing I look for I always feel like if I could just do it just a little bit better it'd be you know I'd be good yeah but I'm never quite good enough and so to get this invitation and go spend a couple of weeks in or you know almost three weeks in in Sardinia with expenses paid was like wow he thinks i'm good you know <laughs> someone else's view of you is different than your own <laughs> yeah yeah so and it, what it did for me was um like i said i've traveled a lot and gone to a lot of different places but this was the first time this was just full of firsts for me it was the first time i traveled on my own and as silly as that sounds, you know, always before I'm either with girlfriends or my husband or, you know, a group of people, but never yeah. just on a plane headed to Italy speaking, you know, Texan. <laughs> I mean, I don't speak Spanish or anything. And so that was a, you know, that was a step. That was a big step for me. And as silly mm. as it all sounds, no. It really, it was a major moment for me. So you, I travel over there and you get to Rome and you have to change planes and get on a local plane that flies you over there. And when I get off the plane in Sardinia, you know, I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to know who's there to pick me up? Somebody was supposed to be there to pick me up. And, you know, just getting off the plane was kind of scary because it's like, okay, you got to get your own bags and, you know. A bunch of firsts. Whole, yeah, just a ton of firsts. And then I get over there and we're in a, a monastery is where mm -hmm. we did our work. 
which was just another to be in a monastery that was hundreds of years old and doing mosaics where which is a know, thou thousands of years old as a practice right <laughs> right right and it was just um and then in amongst other artists from all over the world and very few of most everybody spoke Spanish or Italian and several of them spoke spoke English too so I had a few friends <laughs> uh -huh. that I could talk to <laughs> but you know it was um it was just a, a really a life changing but what that did for me personally was it took away a lot of my fears about I've never been a good public speaker at all mm -hmm. and always been kind of scared of public speaking and after that I was able to get up on a stage and talk about what I'd done wow and and then I, and you know, I'm able to talk to you today, which I would have never done this before. I wouldn't have gotten on and talked because I, I get nervous and then I get started rambling. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> so. and, and I know that about you, you have, you know, you're, you're very smart and you have great things to say, but you don't say them very often, or at least in the past you haven't. And just being a little reticent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah always you know and and so i think that that's what that trip did for me and and you know my main thing that i want other women to know to come away with is that you know there's lots of things that come up that we're scared to do mm -hmm. and we think oh you know i'm too old or i'm too this or that mm -hmm. and yet or i'm not good enough which was usually my my song yes. and dance and yep. And it's, you know, and I, I realize now so much of that was just in my head, right? It's yes. me talking to me. It's nobody else talking to me. It's me telling me you're not good enough. When in fact, you know, you always want to strive to do better. Mm -hmm. But I don't think not good enough is a good term for any of us to use. <laughs> you know, I, I when love we're that. I, to ourselves. I am I am so in line with you on that. I have a friend uh, who's a coach, Be Bex Beltran, and she likes to remind us that thoughts are optional. You know, the things you think and tell yourself in your brain, you can right. change them. You just need yes. to trap them and turn them around exactly exactly and remind yourself that you know you're never too old and you can get out there and do things and you can compete with people that are better you know that are better at whatever you're trying to do mm -hmm. which is another thing for me with my art to be in a group of people that were um, highly thought of in the mosaic world esteemed in the field yes exactly and to be there in and learn from them you know not only i guess i came away with the feeling that they learned some from me yeah i was just going to ask you that yeah yeah and and they learned a, i learned a lot from them and i think you know it it was a really i think that was the best thing i ever did was just to go once i kind of got there and got over my nerves mm -hmm. then to realize that okay here's a excellent opportunity to learn mm -hmm. i mean it's like having a classroom of professionals master class yeah all yeah. the time and you know and it will do nothing but enhance what you do and i think that's with anything we do yeah you know yeah. so i i agree i think that's um you know if you're open to learning and open to growth i mean it sounds like that you did a, a herculean task of putting yeah. your of putting your insecurities aside and saying, I'm here, these are my peers, I'm going to take what I can from this. And, um, you know, I, I'm really proud of you. Uh, you, you know, you're very calm and confident on this, on this <laughs> interview, which I, I mean, I agree, I think a couple of years ago, it would have been a lot harder for you to do. Yeah, yeah, it would have. And you know, I still go back to one thing, one thing I know is that, you know, uh, having a good set of friends is another thing that can do so much for you. Because 
even though I, during the day I would go and do my work and do everything at night, I, I have a set of girlfriends that I'm pretty close to. And mm -hmm. um, I would call them and say, oh, what am I doing here? I'm so out of my league. <laughs> and uh, I would get the support I needed, you know, in English back. Of, yeah, you know, that's right. Can do this. And by the next morning, when I get out there again, I'd be all refreshed and, you know, take a deep breath and jump back in and go and, for it. And void <laughs> up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you did, you did the smart thing is to go and get, um, reinforcements. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I knew I would. yeah, yeah. I, I knew that, you know, and I, that's another thing I think, you know, it's so, if you've got some really dear friends, that's another thing that just, you can't ever be without, I mean, mm -hmm. they, you know, I think that having a good close couple of friends that you can vent to, and talk to candidly yes yes and that will come back and you know be truthful with you and and you know encourage you when you need encouragement it's just mm -hmm. you know you can't yeah. say enough about it yeah well and and i know your squad i know <laughs> what great people they are that's one of the things that um, I'm doing a lot of self-development work as a, you know, after I retired from my corporate job and started figuring out what it is I want to do with my life. You know, one of the things I want to do is, um, is help other people uh, move the needle on their courage, right? Yeah. Uh, coach people and, and that sort of thing. And one of the things I've been learning is that you know, in order to stay positive and continue with a growth mindset, you need to level up your squad. You need to make sure that the people around you are feeding you and not hinder, you know, not right. only hindering you, but right. that, that they're not dragging you down. Right. And it's yeah. not to say that you have to give up everybody that does that. But um, mm -hmm. I know that you have a fantastic group of women who, mm -hmm. um, who boy you up. And I'm so glad that you had that when you had a language barrier and, uh, <laughs> and an, a, and a self-confidence barrier that they yeah. were around for you. That was That's great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, like I said, you know, I feel really lucky. I feel lucky in the things that I'm, the places I've been and the things I've done in my life already. And because, you know, um, we didn't talk about backgrounds, but with my background, it, my picture could have been a lot different. And so I'm really, you know, now the older I get, and I guess you don't really think about this till you retire and then you start having a little bit of time to think about, you know, <laughs> you're pretty damn lucky here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know it wasn't all luck, but, you know, I know I was pretty blessed. Yeah, I come yeah, out I, the way I did. So I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, and I'll just point out that my background is oh, yeah. part of part of my backyard, and those are my blue bonnets that Texas is known for that bloom in the springtime here, and they're really nice. And I've got a whole backyard full of them. <laughs> there, you're so lucky. There is a singer that I love. Nancy Griffith, and she sings a song called Blue Bonnet Spring. She's a Texan as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's so pretty. And I'm envious of your greenery because I live in the desert, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks feel, beautiful. it'll feel like the desert here sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that story, sure. Julie. I, um, I'm really lucky that I'm really lucky that that happened to you, that you could come and even be on the show and, and share it with others. Well, I hope that I hope people can get something out of it and feel, you know, move on and look up and out and I take that, that risk once in a while. I love that. And, you know, small steps, deep right. breaths. <laughs> yeah. Take a deep breath. Fantastic. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for being on my show. Thanks for being on Courage Rises with Susan Jeffries. Oh. And um, as always, it's, it's always great to see your face and hear you talk. Uh, you too, Susan. Thank you for having me. I was, I'm very flattered. <laughs> I, I, I'm really blessed. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Love you. Love you too. Thank you, Julie. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, this has been Courage Rises with Susan Jeffries 
I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you recognized yourself in some of the courageous actions and thoughts of my guest. If you want to get notified of new episodes, please go to YouTube to the Courage Rises channel, like this episode, and subscribe to my channel. Never forget that courage can be learned through practice and shifting your mindset. If you have a story of courage to tell, or you're immersed in this subject matter, or if you'd like to learn more about moving the needle on your own courage continuum, you can email me at susan at I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.